people can join whenever. I'm gonna record this too. You guys are just gonna have to click um, continue on this recording. One minute. Okay. Alrighty, everyone. Well, hello and welcome. Um, my name is Julia. I'm a first year here at Ohio State College of Medicine. Um, welcome to our first annual Ohio State Virtual Second Look Weekend. Um, as I'm probably sure you're aware, every year Ohio State puts on a wonderful Second Look Weekend for accepted students to come back to what was you, see the campus, see the students, um, and the culture at Ohio State. But as you know, of course, this year we had to be pretty flexible with all the changes that are happening with COVID. Um, we appreciate your understanding. We really hope that you and your families are all safe during these troubling times. Um, putting that aside, you all have a very big decision to make in the next few weeks, and we're really excited for you. And so we put together two sessions where you can get to know the students better, get to know the culture a bit better, and decide for yourself if you can see yourself as part of this community. Um, our session today will be with the members of M1 Student Council, and you'll get to hear a little bit about us and why we love Ohio State. Um, and then the end will be lots of time for questions. So anything that you have for us as students, we would love to answer for you. Um, and just so you're all aware, the session is really aimed at accepted students for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, it's a really hectic time, but such an exciting time to be going into the field of medicine. And so congratulations to you all. Um, we're truly excited for you. Okay. Um, a quick note just on technical things. Um, if you didn't hear already, we would love for you to put your cameras on. We want to make the session as interactive as possible, um, but also we understand if you don't want to do that. The only thing that we will ask is that you leave your volume muted unless you're speaking, just to be mindful of the other people that are speaking. Um, going through a quick agenda, we'll begin with a few curricular highlights. Um, Rohan is kind of our curricular master. He's on the academic committee, so he'll touch base on that for a little bit. Um, then we'll move to a few words from each of us just about why we love OSU and why we feel that you would love it here too. Um, next to the highlights of Columbus. And finally, lots of time for question and answer. All right. Sweet. Um, thanks, Julia. Uh, let me know if I'm getting too much wind noise. I'm outside right now. The breeze just picked up. Um, but hey, I'm Rohan, uh, first year medical student. I'll do like a formal introduction in just a little bit. Um, but I feel like you guys should know a little bit about kind of how school runs here. Every med school is a little bit different. Um, so we can go through some of like the big key points. Again, none of this stuff is stuff you have to retain. You'll get this all back orientation week, um, but still good to be uh, cognizant of as you're deciding on what schools you wanna go to and what you're looking for in a medical school. Um, one thing that's really nice about Ohio State's curriculum is they make it as interactive or virtual as you want it to be. Um, that's been especially a big thing um, now that this block has been remote for us. Um, but most of med school you can kind of do at home. Um, we have in-person events about two to five times a week. Um, and these are, this is a breakdown of some of the in-person stuff that we have. So um, the way that we do anatomy is broken up by system. And so we're a systems-based curriculum. Uh, we have a couple different blocks. You start out with some general foundations blocks, go into MSK, uh, cardio palm, and just divide up all the organ systems. And so our anatomy is the same way. Um, at the beginning of each block, we're gonna spend some time in the anatomy lab, usually in the first one to two weeks. Um, we get access to the scrub room that the doctors all use. So it's never really a problem. Um, and yeah, so that's how anatomy works. Uh, one of our in-person things, and this is something that's kind of unique to Ohio State, we call it LG. It's really like your how to be a doctor class. Um, this is once a week, it's every week, every block. Um, but this is where we learn how to be a doctor. You learn how to do a physical exam, how to take a good history, you practice a lot, um, you get to learn how to write notes. And so it's really valuable. It's something that I think you really just need a lot of reps on, a lot of practice. And Ohio State makes sure that you're getting that from your first week of med school. Um, another thing that we have is called LP. That's another thing that's pretty unique to Ohio State. Um, this is being a doctor 101. Uh, this is our early clinical experience, and that's something that Ohio State takes really seriously. A lot of the stuff that you diagnose and you're going to treat as a physician, you're going to be able to see on physical exam and by talking to patients. It's not necessarily going to take some kind of biochemical testing. And so LP is your opportunity to practice that. LP, you're matched with a preceptor for your first two years of med school. You go there once every other week, and this happens in every block. And what you basically do is, um, it's a different, little different flow for every person who has it, but you kind of act as almost like a resident would. You talk to patients, you interview, you practice your physical exam, and then you present patients to your doctor. And so that's another really great uh, practice opportunity. You really start to build those clinical skills early on. And it's one of the big reasons I ended up coming to Ohio State is that's something that 
I know just takes a lot of reps, seeing a lot of patients, and will really serve us well when it comes time for like step two CS and interviewing for residency. We also have something called LC. Um, this is kind of your like informal support group. Uh, this is uh, another way that the class is kind of fragmented. So our class is a relatively big class. Uh, we have about 200 students in every medical school class. So we're on the larger side of medical schools. But Ohio State does a really great job of making sure that you get acquainted or become friends with most of the people in your class. And so your group in LG will be different from your group in LC. It'll be different from your TBL group. Um, so you really get an opportunity to uh, really get close with a lot of the people in your class. So LC is a completely different group of people. You have another physician who's a preceptor. and uh, that's once a block. And you basically just get to talk about whatever's going on, troubles with the curriculum, troubles with life. Um, it's a really great place to just kind of like vent and uh, I don't know, just talk to other people that are nice. Um, we have a portfolio coach through our first, um, actually through all four years of medical school. Um, this is typically someone who's an established physician. A lot of them are program directors, so they have a lot of really great insight. And this is really essential to uh, crafting your application for residency. So we have a portfolio, you have journal entries that are due every block. They're really not too much, but they really help you consolidate everything that's going on. And they really help you kind of reflect back when you're writing residency apps. And I think it's a really valuable part of our curriculum. And then probably like one of the student favorite things that we have are patient panels. So the way that a lot of med schools are structured and especially our med school is as you're going through the block, you learn about different diseases at different times. And a lot of the diseases are diseases that the physicians who are teaching us actually treat in clinic. And a lot of those patients, they love to share their stories of what it's like living with the disease, what the management is like, and you get the perspective from both the patient and from the physician. And so this is something that'll happen one to three times per block. And all the students here, we think that they're really, really valuable. Um, they're really special. We all kind of show up wearing our white coats. Uh, there's no one has their phones or computers out. Um, it's just like really out of respect for the patients. And they are very vulnerable. They'll share everything about their diagnoses, what it's like living with the conditions. Uh, this morning we had a virtual panel on sexual assault. So it really covers all the different topics that you could think of. Um, again, it's one of those things about the curriculum that I just really love. It never lets you forget why you're going into medicine. Uh, Jill, you can go to the next slide. Sweet. So I just put this up here. This is just what a typical light, uh, week will look like. Um, this is from the end of CardioPalm. So uh, just kind of decoding a little bit of what this is. Everything in gray is uh, a non-required lecture. And so the way these are structured is they happen in person in Myling Hall. I'm sure that's where now you guys interviewed, that's where you were. Um, but they are also live streamed and recorded. So that's really useful. I'm someone who doesn't go to lecture. And so by noon every day, as you can see, they all end usually by noon. Um, they uh, post them online and you can watch them at two times speed, forward, rewind, anything you need to do. And that's really useful for a lot of the students in our class. The yellow ones are very similar. They have a PowerPoint associated with them. And those are, uh, we call them flex mods. Very similar concept. You can do them whenever you want. Um, and they're all kind of centered around different diseases. So like that one on Friday was pathology of valvular disease. They're usually about like half an hour to an hour. Um, everything in red is something that's required. Um, so as you can see, we don't have too many required events through the week. Uh, LG is that one on Tuesday. That's three hours long. That's our how to be a doctor. Um, there was a patient interview on Wednesday. That's kind of our patient panel. Um, where someone who had had heart failure and had had a stent put in came in and talked to us about his experiences. And then we also have TB TBLs as part of our assessment. And so, um, as you can see, that was broken up on Thursday and Friday. So this is just a typical week. As you can see, a lot of flexibility. You can do a lot of stuff whenever you want. And so that really builds in a lot of time. If you have a family, if you want to do research, um, it's really flexible to fit the needs of what you need out of med school. Julie, you want to go to the next one? Sweet, so I guess now we're gonna do some introductions so you can just hear a little bit about who we are, um, some of the things that we do, because that'll hopefully give you guys a better picture of what med school's like here at OSU. Uh, yeah, so that's me. Um, I'm Rohan, I'm originally from Dublin, Ohio. That's where I'm at right now. It's about 20 minutes from campus. Um, I went to undergrad at Ohio State, so I've been here for quite a bit. Um, did not take a gap year. Um, I absolutely love Ohio State. So I'll go through some of the things I'm involved in here, and hopefully that kind of gives you a better picture of what Ohio State's like. So one of my biggest things that I'm involved in is I am the treasurer for student council. Um, our student council is pretty active here at the College of Medicine. Um, we support a lot of the um, programming that the different student organizations put on. Um, we also act as like liaisons between the deans and the rest of the students when it comes to like academic issues. And so that's been a really fun experience, really valuable. I was also... Um, merch chair for my fraternity undergrad. So I love designing t-shirts. I love seeing people wear t-shirts. And so that's one of the duties that I have, which is a lot of fun. As you can see, put together the Patagonia as you guys will get those next year. Um, so a uh, great way to just kind of like have fun and still do something that's pretty meaningful. Um, also with student council, I'm on the academic programming committee. 
Um, this is uh, one of like the things I really, really love about Ohio State is that the, curricul or the curriculum here is very adaptable to student needs and the deans and the faculty are extremely willing to listen to us. Um, this is something that's really come up recently um, with the change to remote learning because of COVID. And every single step of the way, the deans are reaching out to us, asking how things are gonna work with us, what our input is. We get to sit with them once a week and just kind of voice the student concerns. And they really take those into account. And that's something that I think is really valuable as you're looking at medical schools is making sure that you're not fighting with the administration, but rather you're working with them to make it as productive as possible. Another thing I'm involved in is something called the Hindsight Project. Um, this is a group of students from all four years of medical school. And the idea behind that is facilitating inter-class um, kind of continuation of learning. And so that's another really big highlight of Ohio State is that one thing I really love about the school is that the classes here are very close with each other and very willing to pass on notes, pass on feedback, give advice. And so hindsight will come in at the beginning of every block. So the M2s have come in at the beginning of every single one of our blocks. They give a little PowerPoint, talk about some tips and tricks that maybe our curriculum won't tell you, but they've just kind of learned either the hard way or what worked for them, what didn't. And that's a really great point because there's really no way to learn better than the people who've done it before you. Um, another thing I did just this past winter break was something called Podemos. So Podemos is a clinic that Ohio State has set up in Honduras. As you can see on the right, we kind of went to uh, Roatan, went to the beach for a couple days after. I think that's me, Zach, and Corn. So a lot of fun. Uh, you get to go down there for a week, either over winter break or in the spring. And um, basically, you get to be a physician. You get to diagnose. You get to prescribe medication. It's a really great way to just kind of work on those skills. We go down with a couple providers. Um, it's another great clinical experience to add to what you're already doing. I'm also pretty heavily involved in research. Um, I do uh, extracurricular research outside of what our curriculum normally specifies. So I do dermatology research. I'm um, actually, Ty and I have the same PI, he's awesome. Um, I'm also doing research this summer at the CDC. I'm doing drug safety research. And so um, Ohio State is a massive T1 research institution. Anything you wanna do research in, you can do it here. And so um, really, the, if that's something that you're looking at, you will have no shortage of opportunities. If you wanna do robotic surgery, um, I just say robotic surgery because that's the coolest one to me. But anything you wanna do, I know right now there's a lab that's trying to 3D print organs. Um, anything that you want, uh, it's really out there for you and that makes you super competitive for uh, residencies. I'm also involved in the Men's Health Club. Um, I'm the president of that club, uh, Ty's the vice president. Um, this is something that I think is really cool because the Wexner Medical Center, which is the medical center attached to the College of Medicine, is extremely willing to engage with the College of Medicine students and have us use the resources that they have to engage the community. So with Men's Health Club, this was started by some current M2s, and they were able to partner with the James Cancer Hospital, which you guys probably took a walk through. It's the third largest cancer hospital in the country. And they've given us all their marketing material. They've given us the resources. They've connected us with all of the top faculty there. Um, and we're really able to reach out to the community and help promote men's health, promote men's health screening. Um, and so that's something that I think is really uh, kind of indicative of how much support you get from the university as a whole. Also involved in beginners ultrasound. Ultrasound is a really big thing here. It's a really emerging thing in a lot of different specialties. And so being competent in ultrasound is gonna be necessary in a couple of years. Ohio State's really big on that. If you come to med school here, you will be competent in ultrasound by the time you leave. Um, and then the last thing I kind of do is called educating future teachers about opioids or FTAL. Um, this is something where we as medical students actually go into the undergrad teachers classes. Um, people who are getting degrees to become teachers. And we kind of teach them about how to recognize signs of an opiate overdose and how to kind of be first responders in that capacity. This is really cool because the College of Medicine is attached to the undergrad campus. And so you can have a lot of involvement there and do whatever you need to, to kind of like build your resume or do the activities that you want to with all of the resources, one of the biggest undergrad institutions in the country. Um, so that's uh, one of the biggest highlights, I think, of coming to med school here. Uh, so why did I come, or come on, Julia. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, why I came here, uh, first and foremost was the culture. Um, I came to Ohio State as an undergrad. Um, absolutely love my time here. Ohio State is a really big school, but they do such a good job of making it feel like a community, making it feel like everyone is friends. Um, you have so many different circles. Me and Julia had like 10 of the same friends in undergrad and had no idea who each other were. So. The culture here is amazing. Everyone is very supportive of each other. Um, we're all friends. We all kind of go out together, have fun. Um, and that's something that I think is extremely valuable. Med school is hard no matter where you go. So having people around you that really help you through it is extremely essential. Um, same goes for like the balance. Um, Ohio State has an extremely flexible schedule. And so you can balance it however you want. If you want to study some nights, you can study some nights. If you want to go out some nights, you can go out. Um, whatever you need to to make sure that you're an effective student and physician, um, you can get that done here. Uh, location was also a big thing for me. My family's in Columbus, and so it was a big deal to be close to home. 
Um, and then the resources. I kind of touched on that with some of the activities. Uh, the resources that Ohio State has as a university are all accessible to you as, an, as a med student, and that's huge. Ohio State is super rich. They're willing to throw money at a lot of different things. And so anything you want to pursue, you can do. Like, for example, that research that I'm doing over the summer at the CDC, the med school is completely paying for it. And all I had to do was kind of write a letter and show them that it was worthwhile. And so the med school is really here to support you. Um, they're really here to be your friend. And the last thing is money. If you're an Ohio resident, med school here is cheap compared to everywhere else. And that's huge when you start to think about four years, what is it, like 10 semesters. Um, so really factor that into your decision as you're uh, making that choice. Thank you, Rahan, for the very, very valuable information. I mean, I don't know what to say now. Uh, you said it all. But hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kinan. I'm uh, one of the M1s. Uh, congrats again on being accepted into Ohio State. This is a very huge accomplishment. You should be very proud of yourself, as I am. The hat and the sweater, come on. Um, so yeah, I was, um, I'm originally from Syria. I was born and raised there, but I've been here for eight years now. Um, and I went to Ohio State for undergrad. I love it here. I went to undergrad here and I chose to come to med school also at Ohio State. Uh, I'm involved in uh, different things uh, in the school now as, of course, student council. Um, I'm involved also in uh, other organizations like uh, leading in global health together uh, and other interest groups uh, such as uh, orthopedics and uh, med feeds, in addition to research. So why do I love Ohio State? Why did I come here? Uh, as Rohan mentioned, the resources. But before that, it's the people. You actually feel like a family here. It's the, the pass-fail system um, takes away all the competition. You feel like you're helping each other. You're not competing with each other. People share their notes. People, people are willing to uh, help each other. And not only your classmates, but also the school itself, the deans. Um, the deans, then, hey, can, can you still hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you, Kanan. Yes. Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, the deans and the um, professors, everyone. I mean, they're so easy to reach to. Um, also, as I mentioned, the resources. Ohio State has not one, not two, but seven hospitals. In addition to its affiliation with Nationwide um, Children's Hospital, and this is where I'm doing my, my, my research, um, mentorship. You can find a mentor for every single thing that you can think of, uh, whether it's classes, whether it's um, research, anything. I mean, I'm doing my research in a very detailed area in ENT, and I was able to find that very quickly. Um, I searched for it probably for one day, and I found it. A lot of opportunities here. Um, it's, it's, and they're easy to, uh, to reach. Another thing is anatomy lab. Ohio State has, it, Ohio State is still one of the few med schools in the nation that still has a cadaver lab where you can actually go and see the bodies, dissect and look at uh, prosections. And this is very important to me as someone who wants to go into uh, surgery. Uh, the fun stuff now, uh, we have a free group me, a free food group me. There's always a free food on campus uh, every single day. Uh, it's really fun. And we have also, um, I didn't mention the hobbies. So from my hobbies, I have ping pong listed there. Um, we have a tournament, a class tournament, um, and it's very fun. If you play ping pong, please come and uh, challenge me. Uh, this is me here um, um, where I'm proposing to my, no, you're good. Um, uh, proposing to my fiance on white coat ceremony. So you also have an opportunity there. You can find uh, no one um, uh, when you choose to come to Ohio State. Yeah, this is all. Thank you so much. Welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kinan. Um, it's really hard to top. Kinan got engaged at our white coat ceremony, so that's pretty hard to follow, but <laughs> I'll do my best. So at this point, you've been to OSU. You know the facts about Ohio State, you know the facts about our incredible academics, our wonderful mentorship, 
and the abundance of resources. So really the last thing for you to decide is, can I actually see myself here? Can I see myself as a student at OSU College of Medicine in Columbus, Ohio? And so I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit about why I chose Ohio State and why I've been so happy with that decision since day one. Um, so there, there it is, day one, white coat ceremony. Um, you really know nothing, but that first week of orientation, they show you the ropes and the M2s above us actually helped really show us the ropes, which is really important. Um, just kind of get acquainted with med, um, with med school, acquainted with the curriculum. Um, so just kind of going through each of these pictures a little bit, the bottom left is actually a picture from one of our first patient panels. So that's our entire class there with the patient panel on the social determinants of health. Um, and as Rohan mentioned, our patient panels are really a great way um, for us to just listen. No notes, no electronics, really just listening to what patients have to say and telling us their stories. And it really gets to the heart of medicine. It reminds me every single time why I'm actually here. Um, it's easy to get bogged down in the details. It's easy to get crazy with a new metabolic pathway or endocrine pathway. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's all crazy. But the patient panels in LG and LP, all the L's, really bring it back home. And they really remind you why you are at Ohio State and why you entered this field of medicine. Um, there's a bunch of other pictures here. The middle one is from MedProm, which is one of the events put on every year by student council. Um, it's held in February. It's a great event, um, a formal event. Everyone dresses up and looks nice. Um, it was really a blast this past year and something that's looked forward to every year. Um, the top right picture is a picture put on at one of the Women in Medicine events. Um, and so that was a Women in Medicine dinner actually, where we were able to um, talk with a bunch of female, female physicians in every specialty and just gain their insights on kind of the barriers and historical barriers that there were to being a woman in medicine and how a lot of that has changed. Um, but it really just was a great event to mingle with students and um, faculty as well. The bottom right is a picture from our annual powder puff game. So it's an M1 versus M2 powder puff game. So girls get ready if you come next year. Um, it's a blast though. Um, the boys usually coach us and we, we just have fun. That's usually in August. Um, and then, of course, the game days are hard to beat. Um, OSU is obviously a Big Ten school, so obviously we study a lot, but we love to go to game days when we get the chance. Um, so there's a fun picture there, but yeah. Hey guys, I'm Maria. Um, so I'm from Columbus as well. Um, I went to OSU for undergrad and I took a gap year where I worked in our cancer hospital um, as a nurse aide, it's called a patient care associate. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out. Um, I left my email there. Um, and just kind of piggybacking off of what Julia just said, um, I chose OSU because it like fit my priorities and my priorities were to have a strong support system with a community and to be close to my family. Um, I come from a big Italian family and we're very close. Um, and at the time, my grandma was sick, so that was my number one priority, but that didn't derail me from choosing OSU for other reasons, um, especially how I felt on interview day and during second look. Um, I felt like the people who I was interacting with, they were going to be like my friends for life. So um, here's a few photos. Um, the one in the top is we went on a ski trip to Holiday Valley, which was amazing, highly recommend. Um, and then after one of our finals, we went to uh, Chicago as well, and that's the middle photo at the bottom. And then MedProm as well. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, just email me. Hey guys, my name is Ty. Uh, for a little bit of background, I went to Penn State for undergrad and I went straight through. Um, so for me, moving to a new state, I want to talk a little bit about that experience and what it was like and why I chose Ohio State. So one of the biggest reasons that I chose Ohio State was the early clinical experience that you get here, which is unlike any other school. Like Rohan mentioned previously about the LP program where you get matched up with a preceptor and every other week I get to spend a half a day in clinic. So that, along with all of the different free clinics that we have here in Columbus, has allowed me to have like close to 100 clinical hours by the end of my first year, which is a super, super rare thing to hear from M1s and other schools. Um, another thing that I really liked about Ohio State is the ability that you have to work at your own pace. 
I'm not someone that likes to wake up at 8 a.m., go to lecture for four hours, and be done with it. I like to sleep in a little bit, maybe roll out of bed at like 9, 30, 10, have a little breakfast, and then get my lectures going throughout the day. Um, and Ohio State's awesome for that, and that you can pick your schedule. Whatever you want it to be, it works. And like Rohan mentioned, there are a couple required events each week, um, but the ratio is like one to 10. There's like 10 non-required events that you can do anytime you want. Everything's recorded. Everything can be at your own pace. Um, another big reason, which I will talk about a little bit more in another slide, is the ability to become an Ohio resident here. This is something that is unique pretty much only to Ohio where you can become, so for me, I was a Pennsylvania resident, and throughout my first year, there's some requirements that you go through to become a resident of Ohio. And once you become a resident of Ohio, the tuition gets cut now. And so that is an awesome thing that really drew me here, and I think drew a lot of other out-of-state students here. Um, and then just some things that I thought were pretty unique about Ohio State, as Kanan mentioned, it was the safety net ping pong league. It was, right now we're in quarantine, of course, so don't get to do that. Um, but whenever we were in school, we'd finish out a lecture and we'd race to the ping pong table to be the first ones that can be there and get the first game in. And it was just a really cool way to go and relax after lectures. So that was something that I really enjoyed. Um, one thing that really drew me to Ohio State, though, is the recreation facilities now. There are six gyms, something like that, on campus, and they're massive. There are everything that you could ever want to do. There's intramural sports. There's like 30 basketball courts and all the weightlifting and exercise that you could ever want to do. Um, also, I really like the access to research here that we have at Ohio State. Just, um, I won't go into it that much because a lot of other people mention it. Um, but I had the ability to do a summer research project on a scholarship and then also do case reports throughout the year. And I also really like the city of Columbus, and I'll talk about that in another slide, so we won't talk about that for now. And then finally, the last reason are the people. And just to highlight a couple of the pictures that I have here, we went hiking in some of the awesome hiking spots around Columbus. I play in a couple different volleyball leagues. Bottom left picture is us at a tailgate. Top left is a Friendsgiving that everybody had together. Top right is the M1 class winning the intramural championship. And the bottom right is the men's health day at, uh, at a football tailgate. So altogether, Ohio State is awesome because that anything that you could ever want to do, you have. And that's why I chose Ohio State. Hey guys, I'm sure a lot of you have talked to me or have met me already, but for those of you who don't know, my name is Soham. Um, I'm one of the co-presidents of our class, along with Shane, who's gonna talk after me. Rohan did a beautiful job explaining why Ohio, and so did Maria, Julia, Ty, and Kinan. They did great jobs explaining some of the more hard points of why Ohio State draws people. What I, and you can talk to them individually to follow up more so, what I really like about Ohio State, as you can see at the top, is the people. I care so much about the class culture. I care so much about how people, we all really work together and it's beautiful to see, um, kind of with how Julia did it. You can see from my pictures, starts with the first day to the left or right with me and the, yeah, thank you, Julia. That is LG, so that's the how to be a doctor class. And like, that was literally orientation. You can see our name tags. This is gonna be you guys in a couple months. And you can see kind of the progression from beginning of the school year all the way to the end of the school year and there's a lot of social activities not only just built into the curriculum but like yeah so that picture that uh julia's kind of showing we've had a student council event where maria organized where we all went to um lind fruit uh that fruit farm place and they had it was awesome um i like i'm a very social person obviously I hosted a pregame at my house earlier this in the year, and I would just say, like, kind of falling off with what Keenan said, the community is superb. Everyone is a Buckeye at heart, regardless of if they're from Ohio or not. Um, and I, I just can't say enough about how awesome it is to just be able to, like, sit in classes and you're inspired by your, <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry, you're inspired by your peers. Like, it's insane, like every day I show up and I'm just like, wow, I am lucky. 
lucky to be here and lucky to be around all these incredibly intelligent people who will push me for me to be my best. So, and then also I have my cat. So you can also definitely have pets in med school. There's a lot of people who have pets. I know that's a very important thing. Mental health, community, social support is very important to me. And you have it all at Ohio State. So that's my two cents. Thank you, Julia. Okay, hi guys, um, my name is Anit. Um, I am also one of the student council members here. And first off, welcome to a virtual first look. I mean, second look, <laughs> sorry. Um, and I actually also went to Ohio State for undergrad, but then I ended up taking four gap years. So I moved out to Boston, Massachusetts, um, where I went to grad school, um, did a degree in like regenerative biology and stem cells. Um, and then I did some research in like organ regeneration, and then I worked in consulting. Um, and I couldn't wait to get back to Ohio State. Um, you know, it, it really is like one of the greatest places. I went here for undergrad and, you know, it holds true even when it comes to med school that there is just so many opportunities here. If there's anything you want to do, you can do it here. And if it, you know, if it doesn't exist, you can make it happen, um, which is pretty wonderful. I think one of the other things that's really nice is that, you know, as a university, because of our size, we have almost every other professional health school pretty much right around the corner. And medicine, as you know, is a very holistic um, practice. And so it's really nice to be able to work and collaborate with so many other people from, you know, PT or OT or ophthalmology or dentistry or nursing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so it's really wonderful that you have those opportunities right at your fingertips. Um, some of the other things that I've really enjoyed is um, not only opportunities and the things I'm involved in at Ohio State, but also in Columbus. Um, one of those being something called Columbus Gives Back, which is a fantastic uh, volunteer opportunity that allows you to really get involved with the community um, and meet a lot of people, not only on campus, but off campus. And I think it's really nice that Ohio State and the College of Medicine is so nicely situated between like um, the undergraduate university and the other professional schools, but also a very wonderful metropolitan city. Um, and, you know, as everyone's mentioned, and it's very, very true, the people here truly are wonderful. Um, I constantly get asked by a lot of my friends, uh, do you even really go to medical school? Because it looks like you're just having fun all the time. Um, and I think that's a really good sign because it, it really does feel like that. Like, I feel like I'm, 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 I feel like I'm having more fun than I am studying half the time. And we study a lot. So uh, that really says something. But yeah, if anyone is a non-traditional student and wants to talk about um, you know, the transition back to school, uh, please reach out. I'm happy to talk to you. Hello. Um, so as everybody mentioned, uh, all great things about OSU Com. I, I'm Shane. I grew up in Jamaica and I don't necessarily, um, claim any state in the United States because I've lived them in them very short periods of time. So, um, that's what you guys will see. But if I'm not here in Ohio for the next seven years or so, I'll probably be in Philadelphia or Boston um, because that's where most of the people I care about live. Uh, so as you can see, I went to Brandeis for undergrad and um, took time off, did the master's, uh, spent lots of time doing research um, at the NIH. And um, then I decided uh, medical school was a place I needed to be. I couldn't uh, pretty much live without the medical aspect of the research that I do. Um, so if you ask about how many gap years I've taken, it's way too many. Um, so if you ever want to know how to make that transition, that'd be perfect. Um, I'd answer that. So here at OSU, um, I'm involved in a lot of things. Uh, sometimes I think I spread myself thin. So that's just an example of the wealth of opportunity that is present here. Um, with student council, I'll start there. I think most of my work so far has been trying to improve our clinical uh, lab skills um, training and a diversity within uh, that community. So when you guys get here for the first couple weeks or so, we're going to tell you all M2s are going to tell you about the bane of our existence of practicing um, skin and clinical lab skills, such as like lobotomy um, and uh, mostly for lobotomy because all of us uh, messed that up. Um, so you get to practice on these mannequins and most of these mannequins at the time were not representative of uh, the large um, population of people that we serve and the diversity of those people, whether it's uh, on the basis of race, sex, uh, gender or gender identity. So I'm working very, very closely with the clinical skills lab to diversify that experience for you guys next year. So it'll be really, really exciting to 
um, see tons of you there. Um, the other thing, so let me talk about things that I do outside of Stuco. So as you can see in the pictures here, I am very involved with um, building community, especially with um, African Americans and black, men's and black men in medicine. Here, Dr. Capers spearheaded um, one of the largest, I think, uh, and campaigns to increase black men in medicine. Um, we have what is called like a three-tier mentorship ladder, where we have a round table, a black men in medicine round table, um, once every semester, where we have uh, from residents to directors to professors um, come uh, and sit with us. And then there's medical students from all three, all four years. Then you have the undergrads also come in. And then we have students who are not yet um, here with us at OSU in any capacity, but are interested in medicine. And we want to reach out, reach back to the community and uh, create that pop pipeline. So if you guys have any questions about um, mentorship and leadership, when it comes to being an African American or a black man in medicine, um, definitely reach out. We have such a great community here, as you can see. Um, we have so many pictures and these are all on every single platform you can possibly think of, whether it's Instagram or Twitter, just to change the narrative of, um, uh, of our faces in medicine. Um, the other thing that I do outside of uh, Black Men in Medicine and Stuco is that I'm also an MD-PhD student. So there's tons of MD-PhD students that I see. I saw your names on the list. So again, if you have any um, questions, uh, you know, um, shoot them at me. So um, Rohan mentioned uh, uh, the curriculum for uh, your M1 year, but ours as MD-PhD students is a little bit more expanded. Um, and, but the great thing is you're with, the, uh, you're with everyone the first year and we do every single thing together. So you get an opportunity to really get to know your M1 class members. And to be honest, they're gonna be our residents and our uh, attendings when we graduate. For my MD-PhD program, so it's, it's, it's an amazing uh, time to get to know the people you're gonna um, actually work with in the future. Um, outside of um, school, which is med medical school, I predominantly write poetry and share my poetry with myself really and with close friends, um, really engaging in really good debates. Uh, if you probably met me and had a conversation with me, we'll probably like, talk at length about it because I'm very passionate about a lot of things, um, about life, culture, and the you know, our role in like making sure our human family and our family really enjoy their time here while, they, while they're here. Um, the other big thing uh, to show my obsession <laughs> with that further is that I do research and I know uh, Rohan mentioned this and a lot of people mentioned this, but I think my research is here is pretty um, unique. Um, I study atrial fibrillation and sinus nodal dysfunction um, with like donated human hearts. So literally I get them in the whore right out of the, you know, beating out of the human body and then re, um, energize them in my lab and kind of sort of study uh, their function. Um, and that just shows how committed we are in, for research here. So for the MSDB students, lots of you are asking about, um, can you do research in your M1, M2 year? I'm like dead in it. Um, actually, while I've been on here, I'm actually editing a um, IRB and a proposal right now to um, help with the COVID-19 um, research because a lot of the patients are showing up with a lot of um, heart abnormalities and uh, are they're all some of the comorbidities are heart diseases and my PI is so obsessed with making sure that we use our resources uh, to give back uh, to our communities here um, so again if you guys have any questions about that so why I love OS2 I think the biggest thing is like Dr. Quinn Capers um, he was a leading like sale for me I got into many other schools but I never um, felt like the communities there or the the leadership there really reached out to me to let me know that I will have a say in my education um, and a say in changing a lot of um, the pipeline of education for the future. And I really like that, that opportunity. Um, Dr. Lynn also, you guys will meet her. She's the Dean of Student Life and she's very, very um, passionate about what she does. She's very, very involved. She never, you never see her without a smile. And she's always encouraging you and encouraging us um, to be the, our best selves. Um, and so yeah, uh, when it comes to our classmates, like everybody has said, it's unmatched. Um, so much encouragement, uh, so much love. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Hello, everyone. So before I get started, you've already had like a million congratulations, but I still want to congratulate you because that really is such an amazing accomplishment. Like, Congrats. I remember exactly what you were feeling. And so I'm not going to talk for too long because I know you probably want to get your answers uh, answer or your questions answered. But I'm just going to go through um, a little bit about my experience here thus far and like some of the things that I'm involved in. 
So I just have a bunch of pictures from my time here so far. So actually I did go to undergrad here as a microbiology major. I absolutely love Ohio State, best school in the nation. Like I literally don't, I debate people on this. Like I love this school so much. There's so many amazing things, so many amazing attributes. I'm gonna start off with the people. Like, just take a look at this slide. The people are amazing. The people that you have already talked before me are simply amazing. Like, when I tell you, you can reach out to absolutely anybody in your class and just ask them anything, like from Sahom to Anid to Ty, Shane, Rohan, Maria, like Julia, everyone is so phenomenal and ready to help anyone. We also have a class group meet and people constantly put in different questions there and people aren't afraid to ask for help. And I think that's actually very beautiful. And one of the biggest things that you want to look for in a med school is a supportive environment. You want not only the administrators to care about you and your concerns, but also your classmates as well. And also like, I never thought, when I envisioned med school, I always thought I would be in the library studying and that's about it. But especially at Ohio State, that is, could not be further from the truth. You get to actually have fun. You get to actually talk to people. You get to, I mean, on this slide, you see like this is, I think the bottom left picture is from when we all just randomly went to Condado's one day. We actually went to Chicago, I believe after Foundations too. Like we just get to do all this fun stuff. And also um, if you can see on the far right is actually a picture of Dr. Bignall at Nationwide. And I put his picture in here just to talk about how strong mentorship is here at Ohio State. And all the faculty are always so willing to help to answer questions. And even Dr. Bignall, for example, is someone that he's always like so willing to help me. He's constantly texting just to check in on me. And I'm not even interested in peace necessarily, but that just shows like how much the, the faculty here really cares about us. Also, um, for the picture, right next to the picture of me and Dr. Bignall, um, just shows you like the community that you can develop here. So um, especially for URM students, I know that might be a concern about whether you're gonna have the support that you need here. And that could, like you definitely have all the support that you absolutely need. And I think that's a beautiful thing about Ohio State. Um, just to tell you a little bit about my involvement. So I'm involved on student council. I currently am serving as the secretary. Um, heads up, you might've heard of, um, we get to do a lot of programming even with the I Promise School. And I currently serve as the president. So as CNMA, as a service historian, and I'm the Aspire Medical Research Experience here. I'm serving as a student coordinator. So one thing I'm really passionate about is giving back and working with pre-med students and just mentoring them to get to med school. And I get to do that through the Aspire program. And also free clinics. I love volunteering. I just love being in clinic. And so um, I've been involved with the New Life Free Clinic. And that one's actually different because it's on a Sunday. And so it's like amazing because I can study all week and then just get to spend like my Sundays there. And for as in regards to research, so research I knew was really important to me. Like I wanted to go to an institution that had, gave me all the resources that I needed for research. So I'm actually involved in two different research labs. I currently do research and surgery because I'm very interested in like the surgical specialty and things like that. And so I'm able to, one, my interest in surgery and also my interest in like health disparities, I was able to merge that and like work on projects in that regard. So I love that. And I also, I get to work with endocrinology because I'm also really um, passionate about like cardiovascular disease and things like that. So I'm actually in a second lab and I look at that and I also look at like health disparities and things like that. So I think I went over um, most of my things. So we'll be happy to answer your question. The photographer of all the photos on my, uh, my slide. I'm so weak. Yes, a lot of those pictures were taken by me. That's the other thing. So I feel like I picked up more of my hobbies in med school than I ever did before, like even in undergrad, which is kind of like reverse to what you would think. So like I'm back into photography and back into dance. Like it's just med school is amazing. And especially here, I really hope you guys choose to come here. Like I really would love to see you guys. <laughs> Hey, hey guys, so I want to talk a little bit about the highlights of Columbus. So I'm actually the president of a club called Gateway to Columbus. So for those of you that are new to Columbus next year, we will be exploring the city together. So that'll be fun. Um, so just a couple things to talk about is that Columbus is the 14th largest city in the country. We have four different health systems and the fourth largest children's hospital in the country. 
Um, something that I had always thought negatively about cities is the amount of traffic that's in a city. And Columbus, really not that bad at all. You can get end to end pretty much any time of the day in under 30 minutes. So that was something that I really liked about the city. Um, additionally, Columbus is a concert stop of the Midwest. So pretty much any major concert that's touring the country, Columbus. So you'll have an opportunity to see both small bands at the bars in the short north and also big bands at the basketball stadium or downtown. Um, OSU, of course, the reason that we're all here. And something that surprised me about Columbus was the relatively mild weather here. So this winter, it probably only snowed like five or six times. It really wasn't all that bad. And I haven't had my first summer here yet, but from what I hear, it's, it's honestly pretty great. Mid eighties, most of the days and plenty of time to do outdoor things. And then finally, my favorite part about Columbus is that it's a food test market. So what that means is that it's a super diverse city. We have people from all cultures, all tastes. So restaurants, whenever they want to try out a new food or even a new restaurant in general, they bring it to Columbus. And what that allows us to do is have this massive cultural flavor of foods, get everything that you could ever possibly want. And for anybody that's a foodie, Columbus is the place to go. Hey guys. Uh, one of you guys can go, so I'm not droning on about this. Oh. <laughs> hey guys. Um, yeah, we just wanted to answer a few of like the initial questions that you guys sent in, um, just so that we could all collaborate on them. Um, Ty, would you speak to the process of getting in-state residency? Yes. So <clears throat> this is something that was on my mind uh, whenever I was coming here and probably is on the mind of many of you that are out of state. So to state it simply, um, Going, becoming an in-state resident, I looked at the numbers. So out of state, so what people would pay for your first year is 55,000, which is a pretty average tuition around the country for an out of state resident. However, once you become an Ohio resident, it goes down to 31,000, which is arguably the lowest uh, tuition for any out of state student that you can get anywhere in the country, which is awesome. Um, so, but in general, the process is, it all boils down to, you cannot use any outside money. So what that means is that you get your loan money, you stick that in a bank account, and that is all you use for every expense for an entire year. And if you follow that, pay your car insurance out of that, pay your cell phone bill, pay your health insurance out of that. Um, if you follow all of these rules, you become an in-state resident for your second year after applying. Uh, so I'll apply like this June. And as long as you follow those rules, you get accepted, and then you get in-state re residency tuition for the next year. Okay, thank you. Um, Rose, would you like to talk about your experience? Yeah, so I know that can definitely be a concern about um, as a UARM student, if you come to Ohio State, are you going to have the resources, support, et cetera, that you need? So honestly, if there is an institution that'll best support you, it's definitely Ohio State. So I'm gonna just talk like in different like categories, right? So forum administrators, to like the attendings that you have on the wards like they are when I tell you half the time it's them reaching out to me saying like oh like are you okay like actually I just received a text from one of the um, URM female like attending saying like oh they're just checking in to see how you are with the pandemic so the administrators and faculty here are just so supportive and when they stay over they're constantly saying like oh like let us know if you need anything like things like that they truly do want to mentor and help you Further with your classmates, like you're definitely able to build a community with your other URM students as well as everyone in the class. And everyone is very collaborative, and you can definitely you have different resources to reach out to. Um, and Ohio State does a very beautiful job of giving us resources and like talking to other students. Like they, a lot of them agree as well. Like from academic resources to um, mental health resources, all things like that. And so I definitely think like the other big thing is reaching out to the classes above you. And I know that's one thing that I always try to make sure to do, even if it's for the little things like, oh, like the block that the M1s are currently in right now is under repro. So what I always try to do before a block starts is reach out to the upper class and I'm like, what advice do you have? And they are always are like, whoa, I made this mistake, try not to do that. And so far it's been actually very, very helpful. So not only do you have a support system in your class, but you also have a support system from um, classes above you. Also, there's a lot of different organizations. So 
SNMA is like the classic one and I actually sit on the board of SNMA and SNMA does a lot of programming to um, help mentor URM students and connect them especially with a lot of attendings and things like that. So I know one event that we had, I believe October was homecoming weekend of this year was, um, it was the, like there was like a mixer event. It was at some restaurant, I don't know, but it was fun. <laughs> But you also just got to network with a lot of different attendings, talk to them. And then it was just because now we see them for a lot of different events later on down the line. So it's just helping to build a network. Also, there's like Heads Up, for example. And Heads Up is very passionate about like serving underprivileged um, students. And that's in particular to younger students. So you can definitely still get involved in a lot of the things that you're passionate about. Um, I know for me, one of my biggest things was that I'm very passionate about health disparities and like making sure different races of people have access to care and things like that. And I've been able to do that in my research. So I think there's a lot of different ways to make sure you are still adhered to like a lot of your core values and making sure that you're supported and things like that. Ohio State really is the best institution I personally believe. And plus Shane said it and Shane can probably comment in on this too, Dr. Capers, like He's amazing. Oh, yeah. He's phenomenal. He's Dr. Capers. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so next, we just wanted to talk about like where um, us students live. Um, most of us actually live within walking distance of med school just because it is kind of hard to park on campus. It's still an option, but it is a little bit more difficult. Um, I currently live on 6th, which is about like a five minute walk to campus. Um, I pay around 650 to live with two girls and we have a house and a backyard. So it's pretty, rent is pretty fair in Columbus, but I know people who can go as low as $400 for not as good of a place, but then also up to a little bit more expensive for some of the apartment complexes. Um, I'm going to share a spreadsheet. It's actually in your Facebook, but I'll resend it in the chat right now. Um, and that is the um, scramble we have for you to like find roommates, um, which is very helpful, um, which I just sent. And there's also a picture in your Facebook group that I saw that it kind of has like good areas and a bad area. And just want to clarify the bad area is just that um, more undergrads live there. So you might be woken up by a party. <laughs> so not necessarily, you don't have, like, it's not bad, but um, preferably maybe not live there. Um, and for financial aid, um, the packages, the financial aid office said around April 17th. So be looking out for those. Um, and for the resources for financial planning, I'm going to send these in the chat as well. One is from AAMC, um, and it's a financial like planner and budget. So they have a ton of different resources on there, um, which I use to make my budget for this year. And then also um, I'm going to share the financial aid email for OSU. So they told me to reach out to them that you guys should reach out to them for any specific questions you have, and they will get back to you as soon as possible on those. So I'm just gonna share those real quick with you. Okay. And for COVID, um, currently everything for next year is still um, on schedule. So we're gonna start um, around that same time. I don't know the exact date, but the office said that that's what we were doing August 5th. August 5th, thank you. Um, and that any uh, future changes will, they'll let you know directly as soon as they can. Um, and advice for you guys, my advice is to first just take a deep breath. Um, you've gotten so far and worked so hard to get here. Um, and everyone, no matter what school you choose, wants you to succeed and I mean, I hope you choose OSU because I know this community has helped me um, get to where I want to be and become the doctor that I want to be. Anyone else have anything else they'd like to say about that? Yeah, I'll, I'll pop in here. Um, so as far as advice goes for you guys, I know this is like a really weird time to be like picking a med school, trying to enjoy a lot of you guys, your senior years. Um, but I think the biggest thing I would say is, first of all, do not do any preparation at all for med school. Please just enjoy these last couple of months. Like nothing that you do this summer will help you. So don't start looking at Anki, don't start looking at uh, first aid, none of it will help. Just enjoy this time off, 
there'll be more than enough time to get ready for step. And the second thing is, as you guys are like making your choice for med school, really look at where you think you will be happy. And I know that sounds extremely cliche, but medical school is way harder than anyone is prepared for. And it, it occupies so much more of your life than anyone is ready for, that you need to be in a place where you are mentally gonna be okay, and you are gonna be able to thrive rather than kind of struggle under the weight of the curriculum. The curriculum is really hard no matter where you go, as long as you're going to an MD school. So really just make sure that you are in a place that you can be productive, still do the things you wanna do, still work out, eat, do all the things that make you a person, because the med school should all come secondary to that. I have another um, little, some advice, I guess. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions and don't like, you're just starting this career that is, you're constantly learning, you're always gonna be a student. So don't feel like you already have to know it all, like, and always ask for help. You are lucky that you're going to such an, a beautiful school where everyone is so willing to be helpful and happy to aid you, aid in whatever you want. And also they're rooting for you and they're, they're invested in your success, you know? Like if our classmates are doing well, all of us are doing well. I mean, I think, I'm sure you guys have seen our Twitter, like it's amazing, it's awesome to see how awesome Ohio State is and it's well known throughout the world. And so given that, just always be like, ask questions, ask for help. That's a very, that's how I even figured out, even like got involved in student council. I was asking like, how, how do I deal with this thing? And then I figured out, well, student council does this. And then here I am today talking to you guys. So there's all like, never be afraid to ask for help, I should say. Two things. So I already told you guys about how much I just genuinely love Ohio State so much. And so home touched on how we're like known around the world. So when I came in as a freshman and undergrad, I always heard that too, and I never quite believed it. But then when I traveled, like no joke, in other countries, I like have worn like an Ohio State shirt or something. And I've always gotten an OHIO, other countries, other states. Like it's actually very, very beautiful to actually see the influence and in, like that Ohio State has on the entire world. Also, um, another, my big advice is just the collaboration. Like you definitely want a school where you are collaborating with your classmates. Like you're working to overcome the curriculum. You're working to make each other the best candidates for residency. And I think that is the special thing about Ohio State that honestly, I know me personally, I would not have gotten that at any other institution. So definitely collaboration. Um, yeah, my quick last minute advice, jump in here, um, is just go with your gut. You know yourself better than anyone. Um, so it's great to get the opinions of others, but in, in the end, you have to follow what you think is going to be best for you. Um, and so that's really all the advice I can give. Um, if anyone else wants to say anything, and then if not, we're going to go on to the next, um, to the Q&A session. So if anyone else wants to jump in, go ahead. Yeah, and we know that it's, we kind of took up that whole hour talking about Ohio State. So if you guys have to go, that's more than fine. We put all of our emails in the chat. So feel free to reach out to any of us individually. You can reach out to one of us and we can ask the question on. Um, I know you guys have other things that you guys need to be doing. But um, thanks for so much for listening. We're going to be here for a little bit to answer some questions. Um, yeah, as Rohan said, thank you guys so much. So how we're going to run this next session is kind of in two ways. So you can either use the hand raise feature. I don't know if you guys can see that. If you click on... Um, manage participants. Wait, is that mm, no? It's just participants for everyone else. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Just if you just click on participants, um, you can raise your hand, and Rohan's going to be monitoring that so that if you raise your hand, you can actually come on camera or come on your microphone and ask a question. And then I'm also going to be watching the chat, so you can also just throw a chat question in the chat, and Rohan and I are going to go back and forth between the chat and the raise hand feature. Um, and then hopefully two to four of us will answer your questions. That way we don't spend way too much time on one question. Um, but yeah, so go ahead, whenever you're ready, we're ready. Okay, so I'll start us off here on if, if that's all right. Um, can you give more details about financial aid packages and when we expect them? Additionally, why does tuition increase Y3 and Y4? Um, so I can talk to the tuition increase. Oh, sorry. No, please go. So the tuition increase. So if you look at um, the timing wise, you got your uh, first. So you have your M1 year. You have that summer off. 
Then you have your M2 year, you have kind of a summer off, but that's like dedicated. So that's like nine months of class. But then when you enter your third and fourth year, that's like a 12 months because you don't really have a summer or you don't have your summer off anymore. So that's like an extra semester that is added. So technically medical school is 10 semesters, not eight semesters, which would be like a traditional semester by semester four year degree. So that's explains that. Um, yeah, all med schools run that way to... where clinicals are um, year round. So the only summer that you get in most med schools is between M1 and M2. Um, and also about the specific date on when you'll receive your packages, honestly, we don't really know that information. So as Maria sent that, inf sent that information to contact the financial aid office, um, we would just recommend you do that for those dates and further information. And as you're budgeting, you can get up to the full cost of attendance. So if you're an out-of-state student, that'll be like 81,000. And if you're in-state, that'll be like 58,000. So you can get up to that and almost nobody uses the full, I shouldn't say almost nobody, but most people don't use the full cost of attendance. Someone goes somewhere under that and you can request whatever note you want. Okay, um, Rohan, do you see anyone raising their hand? I think people are just using the chat feature so we can probably just go through that. Um, I think there's someone who just wrote to me, uh, Lauren. Uh, I am, my PI is Dr. Vadim Fedorov. I can write it in the chat and I'm going into the biomedical sciences graduate uh, program in M2. Cool. cool. Um, Elizabeth asked, can you talk more about tests? Like how often are they based on NBME questions, et cetera? Yeah. So our testing, um, the way that we do it is we have a couple quizzes through every block. Um, those are, it's usually like one to three uh, quizzes. Those are about 10 questions. They happen at 8 AM on usually it's like a Thursday or a Friday. Um, you know well ahead of time what's going to be on it. Um, they're really just kind of like concept checks. Um, they do count for a small portion of your end grade. Then at the end of the block is we kind of have an assessment week. So we'll finish our last day of like actual lectures and curriculum. And we usually get like between like four and seven days, depending on the block, um, between, uh, before we have our first assessment. And our assessments compose of three different things. You have your anatomy practical. Um, the way that they run that for us is we have our uh, anatomy lab. You guys were all in there. Um, we walk through it and they've could basically tag different things. You don't really get to touch it, but they do an amazing job of just making sure that you know what you're being tested on. Um, and you just fill it all out. Um, we take all of our assessments on an iPad. When you come here for med school, they'll give you an iPad. Um, if you have one that you like a little better, you can use that as well. Um, but you basically take all of our, we take all of our assessments on there. Then we have an OSCE as well. OSCEs are, um, that's the same format as step two CS that you'll take in M3. And um, basically it's a monitored patient encounter. There's a two way mirror. And you usually have to do some sort of physical exam, some sort of history. They're really low pressure. You get a lot of practice doing them in LG. So uh, really not that big of a deal. And then you have the exam. The exam is timed like NBME. Uh, we use in-house questions that are based on our curriculum, but most of the questions are in NBME style. So that as you start to get into the curriculum, maybe not necessarily the first exam because you're still getting used to med school, um, but starting in the second exam, you get a lot of uh, clinical vignette questions and they're really written in the style of NBME. Um, a lot of the students in our class use outside question banks to kind of supplement our learning and those prep us really well for our own in-house exams. Um, and those we also take on your iPad. Um, they're usually like 100-ish questions. They go up and down depending on the block. Um, like cardiopolem was a little bit more because it's a nine-week block and you're covering two of the most important systems in the body. Um, so hopefully that clears it up a little bit. Um, okay, awesome. Thanks, Rohan. Um, can you talk a little bit more about MedProm? Sure. MedProm was a blast. So Rose, Anit, and I were actually all on the MedProm committee. Um, this past year, it was at the Exchange in Dublin. Um, I think around 600 people attended. So you can attend and bring one guest. Um, there's little snack foods, and you also get two drink tickets. Um, so it's just a really fun night. Um, Dr. Lynn and Dr. Grego, two of our awesome mentors, um, came as well. Um, Anit, Rose, anyone, if anybody wants to add anything. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's great. It like allows for like, it's not just for M1. So I think Julie mentioned it's the entire medical school and people are able to bring like their significant others or friends. Um, and it's just like a nice time for everyone to kind of just, you know, take a break and celebrate the end of the year um, and get dressed up. And it's great. It's really fun because it's all four classes. Um, also, uh, the two drink tickets, you get to win back drink tickets. So uh, you got way more than two drinks. It was a lot of fun. Okay. Cool. We can move uh, on to Allison's question. She asked, uh, what are your guys' M1 summer plans? Someone want to talk about MDSR? So 
MDSR is basically um, a program where, and it starts, so the formatting of the program kind of starts um, with the applications early on in your M1 year. So like you just hear about MDSR from your um, upperclassmen and things like that. You work towards the first four months of your M1 year to find a mentor, find a project, and then by December, part one is um, due. But basically, like it just gives you funding for research the next following summer, and your research can be in absolutely anything that you would like. And so, um, and I'm not, and so what you kind of do is you go through like a application process, and it's very similar to how you would actually submit actual papers um, for publication. So actually, it's a very cool like learning process, and just like I think eventually you get reviewer comments and things like that. So it's actually a very good program to be a part of. And a lot of our students end up actually doing that. But you also do have the opportunity to do extra programs like outside of Ohio State during your M1 summer as well. Yeah, right. so I'm, I'm doing a program not at Ohio State. So I, I would say probably like three quarters of the class does MDSR or um, somewhere close to that number. Um, MDSR is definitely the most popular thing for people trying to establish Ohio residency you need to stay in Ohio through the summer. So it's a great way to get some funding for the summer and stick around. I'm already an Ohio resident and I kind of want to do my residency somewhere that's not Ohio. Just want to, I kind of want to go to the West Coast. And so um, I decided to apply out to other programs. Um, without going into a full story, I found a research mentor at the CDC. And um, what's really cool about that is if you find another opportunity that is not paid, um, the school actually has discretionary funding that they can give to you. Um, if you can show that that opportunity will bring value to the College of Medicine. And so I just had to like write a little essay, submit it, and it was a pretty painless process. And I know I'm not the first person to do that. There was a lot of precedent. So um, you're never really limited here. The school really wants you to succeed. And so um, any program you want to apply to or anything you want to do, faculty are willing to write rec letters. They're willing to help you find sources of funding. Um, you can do what's going to make you a better applicant. Um, another quick thing about MDSR, they've been really flexible this year because of the COVID crisis, obviously, and so a lot of us won't be able to actually be in hospitals, so I'm supposed to be doing research at Nationwide, and luckily, I, we're also going to be able to continue our research. Um, we're just going to have to make our projects remote, um, so that hopefully um, we can still conduct research. It just might not be in the initial way that we had expected with patient recruitment. Um, this is something that's going on at hospitals across the nation. And I know it's affecting a lot of student summer research prog programs, but OSU really wanted to make sure that they kept up with the MBSR program so that we would still have um, an experience, even if it wasn't as perfect as we wanted it to be initially. So they're really flexible with, of course, what's going on in the world around us. And yeah. just to add to that, like with how, you know, um, everything is kind of shifting due to COVID and the pandemic, I originally had a summer plan that was focus on, uh, on international work. Um, so I was going to be doing something with the Global Fund out in, in Geneva. Um, but because of everything kind of working out, my summer plans actually ended up falling through. But because of, you know, how much there is here at Ohio State, I've been having a really easy time trying to figure out a backup plan. So it's really nice that even if you don't have something set up right now, you have the opportunity to kind of get that going. Um, exactly. In addition to research, in addition, in addition to MDSR, I also um, had planned to do a a summer surgery scholars uh, program um, in addition to other activities. Um, so that's also available all the time. But because of what's uh, happening this year, uh, I'm only gonna stick to MDSR. Okay, moving so on. I see there, you can go, Julia. <laughs> oh, no, 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 go, Rose, go. I like to say, I see there's a question about um, the most impactful things that we've learned from patient panels. So I think Rohan talked about patient panels before, and he did an amazing job at that. And I think one thing, I'm not sure if it's very intentional or not, but patient panels are very well placed in our curriculum. At least for me, they're at a time where it's like the block, the block might kind of seem like it's dragging a little bit, or it's just like you're starting to lose motivation or anything. And it's at that point where it's like, wow, I need to go back to the library. Like, this was amazing. And it's just so beautiful to hear people's stories. And I remember for Cardio Palm, um, they actually brought in an individual who had a heart attack and just being able to hear his journey like when he first thought like something was wrong and just hearing how it like transpired and like how he made some of the classic thinking things that like we talk about like oh this like patients will often think like no maybe it's just like um stomach pain or something like that and we talked about that and then he said those same things so it just gives value to what you're actually learning um in like actual class
So there was another question about academic support and student wellness. Um, and I think this is something that definitely OSU is very good at. Um, I know for me personally, um, like mental health initiatives are very important. Um, like, so um, OSU offers um, support through a psychologist that's just for um, med students. And you can book appointments through her and the school pays for that out, all out of their own pocket. Um, as well as we have, there's like cognitive behavior, behavioral therapy sessions that the school hosts that you can just pop into if you just need a day and even like acceptance training, um, just to accept like what's going on in life and how we can just let things go, which is really helpful. So to talk about the collect, oh, Rose, go ahead. You go in. <laughs> Nope, nope, um, you go. <laughs> okay, I was just going to quickly touch on the academic support that was also asked in that question. Um, so Ohio State has a lot of academic support. I mean, med school, the curriculum can be hard, the concepts can be difficult, and it's a lot of information. So, um, you know, they, we have a fantastic academic counselor, his name Sam Rowe, and in addition to that, an entirely wonderful student life um, office here and they have a lot of resources such as peer tutors that are actually like upperclassmen that can either meet with you one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. Um, we have a peer anatomy hours um, so that's also upperclassmen that take time out of their days um, to kind of go in and like once a week kind of uh, walk M1 through anatomy and like help them prepare for their exams. Um, you can also get faculty tutors if you would really, if you think that that would be something that could be beneficial for you as well. Um, and in addition to that, we have the hindsight program. Um, we also have a Google Drive that um, is kind of passed down from class to class that has a lot of um, resources that previous students have made that is also really helpful um, because, you know, everyone kind of learns in different ways and it's really nice when people have already made those resources whether they're um, concept maps or tables or I know for MSK um, a previous student had made a wonderful excel sheet that highlighted every anatomical um, item that you needed to know like where it started where it ended what it did and that was really helpful for a large chunk of our class to also be able to use so um, in terms of academic support if it's something that you need the resources are here to definitely help you with it. Cool. Um, there were two questions here that I wanted to address real quick. So the one was, once you become an in-state resident, do you have to apply again in your second and third years? And the answer to that is no. Once you're a resident, you get to keep residency and keep the tuition. And the other one is, how common are merit-based and need-based scholarships? Um, we have a need-based scholarship or a need-based grant that you can apply for that is up to about $10,000. Uh, and you apply for that once you're in the school. Uh, there are admissions merit scholarships, so about eight that would go out each year that are full tuition scholarships that cover in-state tuition, uh, and those usually go out during the month of April. And then finally, there is also merit-based based upon the top performers in the class. So the top quarter of the class every year gets a scholarship ranging somewhere from half tuition to $1,500 for the next year. Okay, um, people are asking about a little bit about how the free clinics work. Um, and also I saw another question about if those are on hold now with the COVID crisis. Um, so there are so many free clinics to get involved with. I think there's about eight. Um, two of my roommates actually, Ravi is um, on the CFC board and my other mate, Melissa is on the um, Clinica Latina board. And they, there are definitely many different ways to get involved with them. You can be on the board, you can just volunteer. Um, I've really only volunteered at Two of them but I'm not on the board for any of them um so I wouldn't say it's competitive to get involved with because there are so many opportunities to get involved with them um and they are actually on hold right now because of the pandemic but a lot of them do longitudinal care and they can still get medications to patients they're just not seeing patients in person um so to answer that question if anyone else wanted to speak on free clinics Yeah, I mean, the free clinics are a really great way to, again, flex some of those uh, clinical skills that you learn really early. Um, there's definitely, there's also like specialty free clinics that are starting to come up a little bit more. I know Ravi's been on like the forefront of starting the men's health clinic at um, CFC. And so that's something with men's health that we're going to talk to her about. And so really, it's, it's a really interesting place where you get to actually kind of, I don't want to say like overstep the bounds of like what a med student can usually do. Um, but you really do get to 
provide much more care than you would in any other rotation or um, any other part of the curriculum. Um, it's also really great. Ohio State, we kind of echoed this a couple times, but Ohio State never lets you forget why you're going into med school or go, going into medicine. And um, that's another one of those things. When you start to help, um, especially really socioeconomically disadvantaged individuals with their health, um, it gives you another really great sense of purpose into what you're doing. So for, um, I see there's a question about standardized patients. So we actually, so in the LG class, the how to be a doctor class, actually every week we do have a standardized patient that comes in and we'll usually like treat it like it's an actual appointment. Um, your LG class has, I believe, about 14, 15 people. And so we just alternate like um, reviewing the standardized patient and then counseling them after. So we go through the whole like roster of what you're supposed to do. So that's actually very interesting. And also we have standardized patients for our OSCE exams that happen at the end of the block. So that's just to demonstrate like competency in the different like skills that we're supposed to learn during a block. And also um, someone asked about. <laughs> oh yeah, um, I was saying, Grace asked about finding a research mentor, start doing research. So that's really something that you can do whenever you feel ready and whenever you think that you've kind of got the other parts of your curriculum down um, to go ahead and do that. So the way I found my research mentor as part of, um, I don't know if hindsight runs this or peer, but you get an M2 mentor if you want one. Um, they usually try to match you based on specialty interest or things you were involved in undergrad. So like, let's say you were an athlete. We have a bunch of NCAA D1 athletes here. And so they'll match you with someone like that. Um, but um, my mentor was, I'm interested in dermatology. And so my mentor was already doing research in derm. And so he connected me with uh, the PI that I currently work with. Um, and I emailed him. This was like September, October of M1. He emailed me back. He said, email me in another two months. Like, get yourself together. Understand what med school is. Get it kind of under your belt and then come back. And um, just kind of went off from there. Um, luckily, when you're a med student, and this is probably something all you guys have struggled with in undergrad, is emailing doctors and them just not responding to you when it comes to like research or shadowing. Once you're a med student, it gets you a little bit of clout. Like doctors actually think you're worth their time. They'll invest time into training you and uh, making sure that you have a successful career because then it reflects uh, good on them and they know that they're carrying, they're carrying it forward in the field of medicine. And so you can reach out to literally any doctor at Ohio State about research and uh, shadowing. They'll at least let you shadow if not take you on on a project. So it's really not hard at all. Whenever you feel ready, you'll be able to do it. Uh, just to touch on that, I know people who um, reached out to people because they were doing research in other institutions and they knew that um, there were PIs here doing work that was familiar to them. And so they reached out to them before they even got here and like set up meetings or were able to like meet with them and talk with them and build that rapport. And then during the year, just continuously like took on small responsibilities to, you know, and then finally taking on a project, whatever they're, um, they're interested in. And I think there's also a like research fair or something that happens uh, in the beginning of the year that people like find mentors through. Yeah, yeah. the MDSR fair research fair. Also, um, I see there's a question about student health insurance options. So I don't know if any of my other Ohio State undergrad people can speak to that, but I can give a little insight. So I never actually had the insurance. Um, I always like opted out of it because I'm on my parents' insurance. But um, I know that, do you, I think you only go to the Wills Health Center, which is a health center that's on campus. And, oh, we didn't even actually talk too much about like the location of my campus in relation to the under, undergrad campus. I think that's actually pretty cool about Ohio State is we're like basically on campus, but we'll have our own separate campus too. Um, but yeah, you go to Wills and it's actually not that far. I think it's like a five, maybe 10 minute walk away from um, where most of our buildings are. And then just one just other thing about the health Oh, <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to say the cost. Um, it's $3,600 a year for the health insurance, if that was part of what you were wondering, too. Thank you, Kyle. And That's all. also, um, just also a caveat with that, um, even though you can opt out of the student health insurance and utilize your parents as if you're a dependent, some you have to be sure when you go to the health center that they will accept your insurance so i had cigna through my dad right and this is actually a so in undergrad i wasn't able to use the will student health center because they didn't accept cigna at that time since then they have so just be careful and make sure that um with your family plan if you are utilizing your parents insurance that it is 
amenable to whatever you're going to be using. It's easy to go on campus. I will say, even though we're in Columbus, there's literally a primary care clinic around each corner. They're really good healthcare access here, right? And so it's not an issue, but like that's just something to think about as well. So just I caution to give a blanket statement. Actually, that's a good point to home. So like even um, in relation to, so you're going to have to have like a certain amount of vaccines and things like that for coming into M1. And Hep B is like the one that people usually have to redo. And so um, since I'm on my parents' insurance, and our insurance is through Cleveland Clinic, like you have to go to Cleveland Clinic for it. It's been a harder, like, because I can't just go to Will's or I can't go to any of the um, hospitals and stuff in Columbus. So that's something to think about. Like if you, if, Wolf doesn't accept your insurance and you might want to at least try to get most of your vaccines done before you come to campus so you're not worrying about driving all the way back to wherever home is. I had to pay for a flu shot this year that wasn't very fun. Um, someone's asking about parking permits and I live near campus so I walk. Do any of you drive into campus? What did you say? Do any of you drive into campus? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I, <laughs> <laughs> You can all get free parking at chains now. <laughs> so I can Only comment can on that a little from bit. <laughs> Rose Bean and all the others who park in my backyard. Story here, so I'm like really intrigued now. <laughs> so I can comment on that. So in undergrad, I lived on High Street, right? And that was like perfect. I can just walk to campus. And then in med school, I decided to move off campus a little bit. So I'm still honestly really close. But like, I personally think it's too far to walk, so I drive in. And so if you're you can get a parking pass there's a lot of different parking passes at ohio state so that that's one thing that you're going to have to like look into things like that parking passes like the ones that at least um, were preferable for me are also like a thousand some dollars and you're not necessarily guaranteed parking because there's other undergrad students that use that parking um there's faculty like there's just a lot of people parking on campus basically so um there's a lot of different passes that you can get um so there's like a C pass, things like that. Um, there's a like Columbus passes where you can park at a friend's house. So I park at Shane's house. <laughs> um, I know something that some other people will do is that people that live close to campus usually get a guest pass and it's called an NK pass. Um, mm -hmm. And so people will sell those NK passes. Probably pretty soon people will start posting in your Facebook page being like selling an NK pass. And that's really nice because you can park in the neighborhood where basically where a lot of us live, which is right behind campus. So if you want to live in Upper Arlington or wherever you would like to live, you can buy an NK pass. And if you can get your hands on one of those, it's gold because you can park pretty much within a two minute walk to campus. Otherwise the lots do, or the parking garages do seem to be pretty expensive. Yeah, um, I know a lot of us, a lot of us live like near campus, but we still have cars for doing a lot of stuff in Columbus or going to see family. Um, so uh, the place where Ty and I live, so Ty and I are actually roommates. Um, the place that we live, uh, parking was like part of our rent. And so we pay like 680 a month, including utilities. Um, it's a really nice place. Um, we posted a lot of stuff there, a lot of parties. Um, so it's pretty big. Um, and we get parking spots for the place. And so um, having a car in Columbus is pretty nice. Um, it does make it a lot easier to do stuff around the city. Um, but if you think that you're not gonna have a car, I would definitely recommend um, trying to rent a place that's really close to campus. Um, yeah, I would say also I would say most of us have a car. One of my roommates actually doesn't though and she gets by. Um, you can ahead of time tell the school that you aren't going to have a car and that they'll send forms out over the summer with this. That's just so that your LP won't be scheduled at a place you need a car. So for example, mine's in Lewis Center, which is about a 20, 25 minute drive. Um, whereas if I didn't have a car, they would have put me somewhere on campus so I could walk. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind. Um, as again, these things will come up later in the summer, but just wanted to put that out there yeah also, and also I live, commenting but i live just a quick comment i live three minutes from my door to the door of our myling um and actually there's since the uh, covid they're still putting up signs for like um rent for places um since i walk a lot now that this thing is happening i'll probably like take pictures and send to one of our stucco members to post in the um uh in the group meet so you guys can have like uh, other opportunities like my neighbors they really like their place i lived over there and it's not like not for rent so I'll do that for you the other interesting thing um about columbus to me because well it's not like this in cleveland so i just thought it was interesting is the busing system it's actually very profound here and you can get by like i know a lot of people who get by like just on the bus so 
um, if you ever wanted to like go to Short North or anything like that, um, the buses are definitely very expensive here. Um, someone's asking about the transition um, into medical school and how Ohio State, Ohio State does a good job with that transition. Um, in my opinion, it was excellent. That first orientation week was really great in acclimating you into what to expect from med school, um, into meeting people. Um, the M2 hosted a lot of events for us, so we'll do this for you guys. And it's a really fun event to get to know each other because that's really when you're going to meet all of your classmates. So orientation is great. Um, from a, a curricular standpoint, the first two blocks are called Foundations 1 and 2, and those um, kind of ease into the curriculum. So for example, Foundations 1 and 2, you don't have an anatomy practical. So, you, so Foundations 1, you only have a final exam. Foundations 2, you have a final exam and an OSCE. And then by the time you hit the um, musculoskeletal block, which is the first systems-based block, you will have a, an exam as well as that. Julia, do people know what an OSCE is? Oh, sorry. Such a good point. And OSCE is where you have a standardized patient. Um, and okay, I'm not going to explain this well, so I'm going to explain on OSCE. <laughs> and OSCE is essentially a clinical exam. So you have obviously your pencil, paper, brick and mortar style exam, right? And then they want to also test your clinical skills. So that's like another exam. It's very low, or it's, you shouldn't freak out about it because I know like, people it's med school everyone's gonna freak out about something and so um it's very low stakes not that it's it's a really good practice to get you prepared for third year and fourth year and i mean kind of in it in line with what other people are saying like with ty saying that you have 100 clinical hours yeah that's through lp but with these oskies you're like forced to actually prepare and be a good clinician which is phenomenal exactly get, or oh, sorry no. So, so <laughs> go ahead, Julia. Okay. Um, so just wrapping that up, essentially, OSU does a great job of transitioning you into the test taking style of med school and not just throwing it all at you at once. That's basically the bottom line. I and I think so about me oh, sorry, go for it. So so, sorry, uh, me and Anit also, I didn't mention this in my intro, but I am also a non-traditional student as well. I did my master's and I, I haven't taken a test, like, when I started medical school, I haven't taken a test in over a year. So, they do a really good job at transitioning you through, like, not having a test for a whole year, right, to, like, this very intensive studying for, like, five, six, seven hours a day, like, it is a transition, right, but I will say Ohio State does a good job. And similar to my other point, I struggled a lot in the beginning, hashtag honest ER. So always reach out for help. It really, like, it never hurts. And if, I think also, um, when you, when your face is with the administration, when you're talking to the people and you're seeing, and they're like seeing how much effort you put in, that, that means something, you know? And it's like, every case is different and they take that into consideration. So like, I think Ohio State as a school, as a college of medicine, is phenomenal for its um, championship of mental health in regards to all of this. Um, and if you have specific questions about um, that transition or anything, talk to me, talk to Anit, like, we'll be able to answer your questions. So go ahead, Rohan. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Um, I see a question about uh, taking a research here. Um, yes, you can get a lot of support to take a research here. Um, that's something that's extremely popular here. Um, with Ohio State being as big of a university as it is, a lot of people come here and realize they might want to pick up an MPH, pick up an MBA, do a research year to get into a competitive specialty. There's people who pick up like JDs and they want to do law too, um, which is crazy. But uh, you can do that. Um, our deans, uh, so we have a student life office that's in Myling Hall. It's actually connected to the admissions office that you guys went to on interview day. And um, they have like an open door policy. Uh, Dr. Grieco and Dr. Lin, um, you've heard Shane Rosene talk uh, volumes about them, but they are awesome. They have open door. You can walk in whenever you want. Um, just sit down to talk about um, anything that might be on your mind, anything you might need from them. Um, and you can talk about a research year with them and they'll help you um, get these things in motion to get that going. Um, so don't feel any pressure to like think about that right now. Um, most people who take a research year, um, if they're gonna do research to do a competitive specialty, they'll take it between M3 and M4. And you really only need a couple of months to set something like that up. So uh, not something to put pressure on, but that opportunity is there if you need it.
I saw another question about someone's um, decision matrix being influenced by like what Ohio State is specifically good at in terms of like a competitive specialty. It's no lie that Ohio State's amazing at ENT, right? Top three. Um, that definitely does play some sort of, that plays an influence. If you look at the match sheet that uh, Rohan sent out earlier, you can see Columbus, Ohio, Ohio State, Ohio State throughout the whole list and it's permeated. I think of the six ENT students and or the six ENT students who match, I think four of them are at Ohio State. So um, definitely that, I wouldn't say I, you can get into any specialty you want here. We're a top 40 medical school. There's no really difference between the students. It's, and that's very self-directed, right? It's more about the fit now. I, I would not ever make a decision of your medical school based on your specialty because that will change. Even if you're die hard, oh, I want to be a neurosurgeon ever since I was three years old, I would all I would caution to keep an open mind. And yeah, you should seek out experiences to affirm that, but also like that should not be the main decision factor. Everyone's different. Everyone has a different value system. I, ch I chose Ohio State based on, I mean, I went here for undergrad and grad school. And, like, I'm a Buckeye at heart, right? And I trusted my intuition on interview day, on all these things. You have this sense of community. I value that. Some other people may value, like, like I have a twin brother, right? He's at Mount Sinai right now in New York City. He, that works for him, you know, and we're diametrically opposite people. Like, there's no sense of, I mean, the, the environment's very different in Mount Sinai, and I think that me being a social person fits him being kind of more how he is. I think that works for him. So just make sure you know, like, figure out your values first, and then from that, you can kind of help make that decision for your medical. Just to echo what the home said, like, that, I think that's very valid. Like, for me, um, I came in knowing exactly what I wanted to do. And that's been very helpful because then, like, I can reach out to different mentors and they can really, like, guide me down that path. And then maybe it's just me and I'm me. <laughs> but every block so far, I'm like, wow, like, that, that actually is very interesting. Like, I, I would actually love to do that. And so then that's the other thing. So even though you know, like, 100% what you want to do with your life, Ohio State's the perfect place for that because you can excel in it, you're going to be great, and you can do all these amazing things. But also, if you don't know what you want to do, this is probably one of the best places to find what you want to do. Um, I have a friend who, if you asked her, like, for the last, like, several months what she wanted to do with her life, she told you she had absolutely no clue. And now she's found anesthesiology because we had a one, actually, was this during, I believe, cardio palm, we had some simulation session where we had to like go through this whole thing and we, they brought an anesthesiologist and that inspired her so much. And now she's like all about anesthesiology, but it just shows you how like such random events can really like spark such a change in you. Again, Ohio State, probably the best place to not know what you want to do or know what you want to do and excel in that. Yeah, we're also super connected with Nationwide Children's. So a lot of the faculty here actually hold positions both at Children's and Ohio State. So Nationwide Children's, for the people who aren't familiar, um, it's like the third or fourth largest children's hospital in the country. Um, they're like 10 minutes away by driving from Ohio State. There's a sh free shuttle that runs between campus and Children's like every 20 minutes. Um, so it's never a problem getting over there. And so any specialty that you're interested in, you can see it both like in the adult population and peds. I know I'm someone personally that no matter what I go into, I'm going to practice in peds. And so it's really nice to be able to like see how that specialty is like carried out with the majority of people and then see what's different about it when you're talking um, with a pediatric population. So you'll get any experience that you can think of. And also the match list that for our M4s just came out. So if you are curious and you kind of want to like a better picture and like have some data to look at, that's a really great example. You can kind of find that on the website or one of us can send it to you if you're interested. And that'll just show you like the breadth of not only specialties that people are able to get into, um, but the various institutions and everything as well. So that's also a good example. Uh, quick question, guys. I also want to touch on the the changing atmosphere of the medical um, education and um, the trajectory to residency, et cetera, et cetera. Um, of the way uh, social media is going as far as like even med Twitter, I know people who um, gotten interviews and like, um, and went on to do residency at certain institutions because they interacted with someone on Twitter. So I think, or they had a really good mentor who 
uh, called up a, first, a friend of theirs who went to their own medical alma mater and they got an interview to um, a place. So um, OSU has really top dogs to doing what they do and they all have relationships with people across the entire country, entire world. I know people who are going to do residency in Canada. Um, and so it doesn't, ma it doesn't necessarily matter whether or not OSU is like the top leader in that. If you go, if you're interested in it, I'm pretty sure they know someone who, or other institutions that you may be considering. So um, the conventional means to get into residency is no longer um, existing and that's gonna change in the next couple of years, especially with, um, as you guys know, um, step one uh, turning into pass fail for you guys. Um, yeah, echoing Shane a little bit, um, as you know, they put out the change to step one becoming pass fail. There's really no word on when that's happening. Um, maybe your class, maybe the next class. I think that a lot is going on right now, but I think that it's just important to know that every school is dealing with this and that OSU is surely on top of it. Um, the deans talk about this at all of their meetings. They were ready for this change. They are ready for this change. Um, and so when it's put into place, they will know what to do better than anyone. Um, but like I said, no one really has too many details on when that is actually happening yet. So I think it's something to keep in the back of your mind, um, but also not going to be, I don't know, it, the thing, everything is blurry right now, but um, just know that OSU and every other school in the nation is really dealing with this. Yeah, one thing that I can tell you, so I sit on the academic programming committee, so I've been talking with the deans about how the curriculum is gonna change and what they're gonna stress um, with step going pass fail. Um, right now, the common kind of sentiment among program directors, and I'm sure what you guys have read, is that now step two CS and CK are going to become a lot more um, important when it comes to residency admissions. Um, that's one thing where like Ohio State, we historically performed super well on CS and CK. And so if anything, the administrators have just talked about adding more of that clinical focus into the earlier parts of the curriculum to make sure that the students are really well prepared um, if those tests do become the new metric by which uh, applicants are stratified. Did you guys answer the state residency question? Sorry, I was making lunch and I was AFK for a minute. <laughs> no, you take it away, Ty. I don't think. Okay. Had... Cool. There were a couple new ones in the chat I just wanted to address real quick. Um, one was, if you are trying to get in-state residency, do you need to get out of your parents' insurance? And the answer to that is no, you do not. But you have to pay them every month. And it's a really weird system. So, for example, there's some people in our class that are paying like $400 a month to their parents for insurance, which I don't think you have to do. Um, I personally Venmo my mom 50 bucks a month and I call that my insurance payment and they said as long as you can back it up for some just where you got that number you'll be good uh, so that's what I'm doing and but if you want to you're also more than welcome to get out of your parents insurance and use the school's insurance and the one other one was to clarify to get residency can we not travel out of the state for the year and to answer that one it is you are allowed to have 30 days out of state for the year and that is self-reported, so take that as you wish. And, <laughs> and uh, whatever, you get 30 days out of state, or you can do two no more than two weeks consecutively. And then at the end of the year, you send that back into the residency people with your application. And I think that was all. Hi, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't there an entire Google Doc dedicated to helping um, out-of-state students acquire in-state residency? To be honest, I've never seen the Google Doc. There, there very well might be a Google Doc, though. <laughs> there's, there's plenty of help, though. We, uh, okay. we reach out to the financial aid team, and they are more than open to help you answer any question you can, and they're there to help you get residency. So they'll do everything they can to help you out. If there is a doc, we'll find it and send it out. Yes, absolutely. We'll look into And if it. not, we can make one. <laughs> Okay, are there any big questions? If, if we didn't get to your question, sorry, things came out as kind of quick, please resend it oh. right now. If we miss, totally missed your question again. Our um, and then also if at the end of the session, there's new things that spark to your mind that you didn't mention or that we didn't get to cover today, please feel free to write in the Facebook page or a bunch of us sent our emails in here as well. Feel free to reach out to any of us by email. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and also there's a, the session on Wednesday, that'll be with a panel of M1 to M4 students. We, it'd be great to attend that too. The more exposure you can get, the more questions you can get answered, the better. Okay, a couple more. Did you guys address the question of Somewhat, what goes oh. into the financial aid packages? No, Ty. 
Okay. Um, so for what goes into the financial aid packages, it is almost solely loans. Um, some people will be lucky enough to be able to get a need-based grant or the merit scholarships, but for 90% of the class, it's loans. There's a question about free yoga oh. classes. Maria, I think that's all you. Yes, there are free <laughs> yoga classes. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so there are free yoga classes. Um, they're through the RPAC, but then I'm also bringing in some more through Core Power Yoga. Um, just kind of more advanced classes and do a little different things. Um, and I'm actually posting those so all of OSUCOM can use them whenever they want to. So yeah, definitely utilize that. Um, one asking about getting a real feel for what it's like. I think that is very tough to do without actually visiting Columbus and visiting Ohio State. So if you have the chance to do that once COVID clears, um, I would obviously recommend that. Um, I don't know if anyone has any virtual ideas. I would yeah, say reach out to and I would say reach out and talk to as many students as possible. Um, as you can tell, we all come from very different backgrounds. We all have very different experiences. And so what the transition to the city or remaining in the city has been like has been very different from all of us. And so depending on what your individual situation is, um, you're going to have a very different experience. Um, what I can say, though, is just talking broad scale. Columbus is a very like open and accepting community. Um, we have every minority population that you can think of, and they have a support group available to you if you belong to that population. And so it's really not somewhere where I've talked to anyone who hasn't felt like they found a home here. Um, and that's another thing where I think you should just reach out to students as much as possible. Um, there's a lot who are on the Facebook page who are older um, students who you can talk to, any of us, we can connect you with people who might share similar attributes. Um, but being remote, I think that's kind of like the best bet that you really have. Also, um, I know a lot of people in our class did this. Um, before we started school, like for those first couple of weeks um, before classes started, people like just randomly met up with each other. And so hopefully once co like COVID clears with enough time that you guys can just like explore Columbus for two weeks or so before classes start. And I'll hold also, something for you guys. Oh, um, you can also check out something called Columbus Underground. Um, it's like an online um, resource that the city uses that they kind of put out different events that are kind of occurring. You can take a look at that to kind of see the things that do happen um, in Columbus when it's not on lockdown uh, to get a better idea. Um, also, um, I know this is, um, you could also just Google some fun photos and stuff. Uh, take a look at like certain places like the Short North, the Arena District, um, photos of campus. If you look at all of our backgrounds, um, we're trying to highlight some fun little places of campus like the Oval, the Medical Center, the Union and stuff like that. Um, but if you look at some of those resources, kind of get a feel for the kind of things that go around in Columbus and the general culture of the city, that could be helpful too. In regards to Robert's question, um, no, I don't think for me personally, game days have ever been disruptive. I mean, from the time I've been here, even since undergrad, like I personally was not one to go to the games. Like I would go to a game or two every semester. So that was about it. <laughs> but um, no, I still found like going to Thompson, like I was able to still study. It wasn't disruptive. And that's when I was like in the dorms in undergrad. And even now, because the way our campus is like set up, the where, where the med campus is, like we're on campus but we're also separate. So um, it's never been an issue. It's never been disruptive. Yeah, well, one thing I will say about that is like, so I'm a big game day person. I love game days. They're on Saturdays. I usually don't study Saturday mornings. Um, so it's a great time to like connect with your medical class. But one thing you will need to plan around is if you are living near campus, traffic will completely shut down the city. So Ohio State football um, is like the biggest thing that happens in Columbus on that day. And so if you need to do like groceries and stuff, you would just have to do that like the night before or later that day. Other than that though, if you need to study that day, let's say you have an exam the next day, um, the libraries will be like dead quiet because the game is happening uh, a little far farther away. Actually, that's a very good point. So if you're trying to come to campus to study, I know for me personally, like driving like with game day traffic is horrendous. So usually that's when I'll go off campus to study. Also there's, all throughout Columbus, people are celebrating game day. So my Buckeye spirit's like always crazy high, but I just don't generally go to the games because I don't understand football still. <laughs> but um, 
what I do at least is I'll still wear like a high state shirt and people are like oh like you go to high state I'm like yeah like things like that so there's still ways to get involved without like necessarily being at a game um, and I just wanted to chime in real quick. Um, I got a message from Julie from the admissions office about financial aid packages. And she just said that Terrence and financial services should be able to bundle everyone's financial packages by early next week. So you'll get an email to your name.number email. And then log in, if you log into your applicant portal, you should be able to see that. Um, any scholarships that you might have been awarded will not be reflected, but it will show med grant money. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, just wanted to report that to you. Andre had a question about your guys' favorite restaurants around campus. Happy hour. Forno, happy hour. <laughs> best thing you can do in Columbus. It is like, you will leave there full and drunk, 15 bucks. It's the best thing that you can do in Columbus. Hands down. So there was a question about the curriculum. Um, do you want to, or just, I just want to make sure we address it. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, what, what was the question? Um, Sorry, is the that. curriculum just pass fail or is there honors and internal ranking? Yeah, so um, the way our curriculum is structured is you will get a number grade to yourself um, at the end of every exam. And so that grade, however, the way that the blocks are, they keep that number internally, but it's traditionally like a pass fail curriculum. The way that number comes into play is that um, so you basically only have to pass every block. But the way that number comes into play is on your MSPE, which is your like medical student performance evaluation, your dean's letter, um, they get sent off to residency programs on the, I think it's like five pages long. On the fifth page, there's a little box that has quintiles. And the quintiles are composed of your grades from preclinical, your um, scores on rotations, and I think like one other thing. Um, but the um, thing that's much more important is how you perform on rotations. So on rotations, you can do like fail, pass, and then I think it's like high pass. And so um, that's traditionally how it's done at most medical schools. What I would say with that is um, obviously you want to do as well as possible, but there's not too much pressure to actually get like 100% or get an A on every single block. Um, kind of speaking more from a student's perspective rather than administrative, residencies really just care about like step in rotations. Um, and the MSPE is really, that's such a small part of the MSPE. It really doesn't come too much into the picture. If you guys are curious about that MSPE, you can Google OSU College of Medicine MSPE and you'll find like the sample letter available. So you can take a look at that. Was that one updated, Rohan, or is this that, that one that's from like 20 something? You're, you're muted, Rohan. I don't, yeah, sorry. Um, I don't think that they've changed it substantially, especially the quintile thing. I don't think they've changed since um, that was posted. It's a little bit different from that one online. So we should let them know that too, but it's pretty similar. Uh, hopefully that answered that. If that didn't fully answer your question, feel free to message again or you can direct message me. If we miss any of your questions, please rewrite them. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of things coming in the chat. <laughs> also, Julia Rooftop, there's a lot of cute rooftops in Columbus. Um, blinking up, Lincoln Social, actually, is that what it's called? It Lincoln Social. Yes, yeah, it's so cute. <laughs> Restoration hardware rooftop. Oh, that. <laughs> That's fun too. Yeah, there's and there's a ton of time during orientation week, and if if you're moving a little bit early to explore these places. Um, another thing we're really hoping to do, um, because second look obviously has to be virtual this year, um, is probably like in the week or two before school starts. Um, we want to have a social event with our class and your class um, at one of the bars around campus. So hopefully that'll be a fun introduction to Columbus, a fun introduction to OSU. Um, so if you decide to come here, be on the lookout for all these fun things, um, but definitely enjoy your summer. Something I, this is very random, but I think has value to like show how awesome Columbus is. Um, earlier in this virtual second look, people said that oh, uh, Columbus is a test market, right? Very true. You can make a lot of money. You can do a side hustle by being a consumer. Um, researcher and you'll literally Wendy's, Domino's, all these fast food restaurants, they really want the Midwest market. And so literally you'll get paid 40, 50, hundred dollars to just sit, eat. I ate like that Wendy's hot and spicy chicken sandwich biscuit thing. And for, they changed it up a little bit to the one that's like in the market and that's good because the first one wasn't really good. But yeah, so you can make a lot of money on that. I, I made $100 eating Twizzler, or not Twizzlers, but the 
fruit by the foot stuff like you Columbus has so much th so many things that you would never expect or like because it's, it's Columbus Ohio we're a flyover state but it's like getting there you know like it's the yo pro thing it's the new young professional city so there's tremendous growth and you're starting off this journey right so in four years from now I can just only imagine how much greater this city is going to be and we also have an amazing public health leader amazing Awesome, guys. All right, well, if nobody has um, any more questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Like I said, we put our emails in the chat. Um, we would love to talk with you all, but best of luck and congratulations again. Um, we're really excited for all of you. Nice any to meet you yeah, Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you at orientation. See you at orientation. See you guys. Thanks so much for spending your time with us. Yeah, guys. And remember to join the other panel next Wednesday. Yes, definitely.